Warcry very recently got the biggest update of the second edition of the game. We got a whole slew of new things being added. We got a whole bunch of points updates going in. There are countless content creators looking at that, looking at what's going in there, including myself. And we'll basically be breaking that down and telling you what there is. But today what I've got for you is I brought Rob over again from Free Heroes 1 Chaff, friend of the channel. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about that update, but more in a sense of how it's going to be affecting the meta going forward for the different kinds of warbands and the different kinds of factions that it affects, and where we see the future of the game going, at least in the medium term, whilst people kind of get the hang of the new points changes and what it means for them and for their warbands. Before we get into that, as always, if you like what you see, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to throw some support my way, you can join me here on YouTube as a member. You can join me over on Patreon. You can join me over on Streamlabs. What you'll get is you'll be able to see behind the scenes content. You'll be able to see stuff before it comes out. And you'll be able to have a little bit of a say into the kinds of content I create in the future. So yeah, without further ado, let's get to me and Rob talking about the update and what it means for you and for the message as a whole. Rob, thank you very much again for coming over to, to have a chat. So it's my pleasure. You know I'm always here. What I wanted to do today is kind of go through the uh, rules updates to designer commentary, not breaking it down bit by bit because everyone's talking about it, but really what is the impact on the meta we think might happen if there are any, how, how the different war bands that it impacts and how they, how they might fare in this new kind of environment that we're going in. And then anything is kind of pick your brains to see if there's anything that you can see in there that might be the next best thing to, to look out for. Or if there's, if there's some, some kind of secret sauce um, that, that, that you're brewing. I mean, there's a lot, like there's a lot to go. Like, obviously this is a, like one of our biggest sacks that we've had in, almost a year right about 10, the, 10 the, 11 the months biggest. yeah 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 the, the last biggest, one right this is yeah the last one was in like june last year and that was like a really small one i think it had the resurrection hits and then the one before that which was the big one was like in january 2023 and that's where we had the monster update right i mean now we see the additive to when are we getting all these awesome models put in we got yeah. them here yeah that checks out everyone's happy seraphon players are eating well we see a lot of things being added for Gits players. We see a lot of things being added across the board. Slaves of Darkness finally receives the box that they bought oh, yeah. two Christmases uh, ago. Last Christmas, I can't even remember at this point, but we're seeing a lot of things added and caught up and just seeing the attention to details and sure. the outright open support is what makes me super happy. So now sure. with that with that put aside, we're not talking about the nitty gritty facts, right? Like, no, so no, 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 no. So where do you want to start? Where do you right. want to start? Let's start with the points updates, but let's start real high level. What do you think first about about the updates, about the points costs that have gone in, like high level? What how, how do you think they're going to affect the game? I've talked about how I think that what they've done effectively is kind of squeezed in the two sides. So they hit the guys right at the bottom, all those really, really cheap chaff units that were making up massive warbands. And on the top end of the thing, the really big Titan style models kind of increase the points cost on those. They're still playable, but make it so that you really have to think a little bit more about what you put in your warbands. And my guess, I mean, I, 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 I say it's a guess, like John Bracken basically confirmed it. He wants more of that middle ground to be playable. And by squeezing the efficiency of the bottom and the top, that's his way of doing that in this. So what do you yeah, think? Yeah, it, it's definitely definitely like a push towards the middle ground, like basically what he said, but not just so much in terms of fighter profiles, mm. but a lot, of, a lot of things in lists that we're building end up being like seven, eight like lists. Under the new format, seven, right? Yeah, the new format yeah. of it. We're having a lot of seven, eight lists. So that's where what the biggest thing that these points changes are. Yeah. You have less points for more models, but like I'm still getting all my blessings in there. I'm still getting to play with three, now four threats, and then three things mm -hmm. to kind of pepper it out. So I don't have these nine men like I used to. 
But I do notice I'm having a lot more quality of sure. I see threat density. There's a lot more threat density in a, in our lists that we're right. building, and it's kind of fun. Granted, no tournaments have happened. It's really young. It's really impossible. But from what we're seeing, the prediction, like we already know that like horns, horns is barely touched. Chatters were hit five points, going up to sixty. The hurlers are still there at one twenty five. Their leader tax is still there. They're still going to get two hurlers, a bunch of guys, and then they're going to get like a big ally in. Like yeah. they're still going to be eating good. Now with the nerfs to the talls and the smalls, even with Keratin Overlords hitting yes. Admiral, Mortar, Aether Cannon. Yeah, the Privateer is going to 55. They're still sure. by far away the best chaff, I think, in the game for 55. They're very it's good. It's like they're very good. RBF's ghouls that are like eight wounds. <laughs> it's still... <laughs> Almost an insult, sure. but the fact that they hit FFP itself, fight for profit, makes a massive difference in how this how they function. So sure. while I think that they're getting nerfed, I don't think that they're out and down for the count. I think you talked about that in your last video. Uh, but as yeah. we're seeing, we're seeing these seven, like seven, eight density models. And if you're saying, what we're we seeing right now, out of order, one of the new Seraphon models coming out called Agrodon Scarvet. Eve. Five, I see believe. I've got that here. Um, the Agridon Lancer Alpha with Celestite Club. Is that the one? No, sir. Ah, here he is. Point. Scar Veteran on Agridon. Yeah, 295, 4535 damage profile. Ooh. Movement 8. Toughness 4, 30 wounds, which is huge. He's also, he also gets Saurus Bite ability. He gets everything. He's he massive. gets Tearing Bite. He gets yeah. the triple that lets him fly for three inches over something yeah. and land and do half value damage. Yeah. You're like, but Rob, it's 295 points. That's a lot of my list. Yeah, you're right. That is a lot of your list. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 20 more points on it. We're going to yep. put that up to <laughs> Make it even more expensive. Sure. Yeah, we're going to go up to Tyrant status. We're going to make them 4, 6, 3, 5. And yes. what we're going to do with that is we're going to say, hey, check out this Tearing Bite platform, right? Ha. It's going to be 4, 6, 3, 5. On a triple 3, we're going to be 4, 6, 6, 8. Whatever. Which is just yeah. horrifying, right? A triple 6 puts that up to 9, 14. <laughs> hitting on well, I mean, even if, right, depending on, what, depending on what you're fighting. So Tearing Bite famously loves attacks, right? You can make a, a call based on what you're fighting against. You're like, okay, right. If the biggest thing that I have to fight is only going to be toughness five, or it's going to be toughness four with a lot of wounds, you just throw that the attack on there. And then at a sure. five, five, three, five, that one extra tearing bite attack, which is going to be netting an extra like six damage or whatever. Right. It's, it's kind of huge. To flavor to season i like yeah. the fact that i could just get the consistency you're gonna pair them up with either a calthia or you're gonna pair them up with a knight quester mm. or a soul sworn quester which a i quest really like you give it the eight inches it's only got one inch it's got 30 wounds it's got four toughness mm. it's got a lot to get through but you can rip through that it's not a big sure. deal you gotta be careful what you do with it dice being dice it still can get ripped down but i think in terms of order i think this is an absolutely nana's wild mm add for them and same thing and i don't even think it's the best thing they could be doing in house we're talking about high level stuff i want to talk about the slan star master your boy it's always good talk about how about we're gonna just be teleporting crocs croxagore's in there now yeah the new croxagore uh, i think they got a couple of different kinds so you've got the croxagore and the war spawned 200 205 points right so the crack score at 200 points the big noticeable difference is for maybe you saw is the one that garbage model promptly throw in the trash if you want to use it and play with it, fine by me. It's got to be the same base size. Yes. But why would you do that when these things exist? And then we can do, it's two inches still, two attacks yep. still. Yep. We went up to six strength. We're no longer three, six. We are four, eight. We are Titan status. Big profile. Living in, in uh, order. It is not alliable, but it's still got tearing bite and it's got a nice new ability. We went from six movement to four movement, but we went from four toughness to five toughness. Sure. Uh, 28 wounds. Big boy, you're getting a lot of value for that. You're going to want to bless that up. Bargain yeah, bin, three, definitely. six, four, eight. So we're not going to be using tearing bite too much on this. If we absolutely have to, that's fine. No, it's got uh, the damage to just hit, right? Like it, it doesn't need to. But yeah, you're going to use brutal blows, right? Like, so if you move within. A one inch of two more enemy fighters you add half the value in this ability rounding up so you can give him basically six attacks on a trip five or six so then it's six six four eight they got a yeah. spot of sotek as well if you are bringing those cheaper skinks or you're still bringing they need the minion room mark right so you can still bring the sublet stalkers in-house 
Like they yeah. can they they can mess around. It's a strong double, and I think the model's awesome. Yeah, the only reason that keeps me back from like really falling in love with it is it wants your skink to be endangered. So like you want a skink to be engaged with a point of damage on it. Yeah. And I'm not a fan of these types of strategies, like Orc Flame Keeper, where it's like this super powerful ability and it's like really awesome but it requires something practically being dead or in harm's way. Yeah. I'm sure that now Kixie himself has the minion rune mark and yes. like the Raptid on the new Raptid on writers have the rune mark. So like if you can get it to go off and you're going to five, five, three, six at two inch range, it's a pretty great profile, yeah. but uh, you know, I'd rather just be teleporting some, some Croxies and that's the flavor. Take what I say, the grain of salt, try yeah. everything out. But uh, this is just my insights from like a, a very competitive standpoint. Are they sweet though? Yeah, you can't go wrong with them. They're awesome models. But yeah. Seraphon's eating good, man. I think like the high level for order right now doing that. You're also gonna have uh Wild Wildercore and your boys Haunchies are able to eat again because there's no KO just shooting them off the board. Yeah, that's now true. That, have, that so, slippery hit, man. It's pretty big. So slippery it's great. So like they justified it. So no longer is it you're uh you could be three inches out, take the mm. hit from a three inch thing and slip out. Yep. So it's going to prioritize building. If you're seeing them a lot in your meta, you're going to want to prioritize ranger, range attacks range two. of yeah. two, two range, three range, other range, not bad. And that's going to go a long way for gearing towards that. So we're talking about how does the meta adjust, right? Well, mm -hmm. we see Scarvet coming in. We see a lot of action sheeting economy is going to just be as big as ever because you're going to have smaller lists unless you're running Hunters of Wanchi or you're running... Uh, Wilder Core, where you can get up to naturally higher numbers because you have oh, cheaper, yeah. smaller fighters. But you were going to be expecting those to rise up because KO goes down. Horns is going to be there. We know Horns is going to sure. be there. For sure. I still think Horns probably is in contention for the best warband in the game. It is. It, 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 it is right now. And I think until people start finding and experimenting more, they're going to run rampant. So if, you're, if I'm going to a tournament tomorrow, let's say, and I know I'm going to have to gear to beat something to beat Horns, because honestly, like you're gonna, you're gonna see horns with Vex Morning, you see horns Mirmidon still, horns with other big boys. But uh, if I have that Scarvet, or if I have the teleporting trick to just to drop onto a uh, hurler, I'm gonna oh, clock the hurler tilt clean right. Up. So f funny you mentioned that, right? So Night Horn got their got their big old update. <laughs> Suddenly, there are a lot of those ten inch move flyers out of night haunt but i'm suddenly looking at and going okay well if i throw a triple on these guys they're rolling a 4-4 damage profile which is kind of massive for like 160 points which is really good so i'm not saying all right i'm not coming here to say night haunt are gonna be the, the the meta pick to beat horns of her shirt but at least what we have now is across all the grand alliances it seems there are options if horns are still going to be there Order now has a very fast Titan style piece in all of the new Raptor Dons. They have to have these fast pieces that can kind of fly in there, tie up the flame hurlers and knock them out. Because they, ultimately they're not that tough in combat that they're going to stand up to like four attacks doing four, four damage, right? They'll, they'll fall over. So Death have that. Destruction have always had that. And then Chaos. I mean, Chaos have always had the Varen Guard, which has always done Varen Guard things. And the Varen Guard hasn't been touched. So yeah, I think horns are definitely still going to be up there, but at least all of the Grand Alliances have options to counter yeah, Horns of Hesha if of you course. build into it. Of course. And I think that's the thing too, is like I always built to say, hey, I'm going to see KO on a top table somewhere. I want to make sure that I have a ranged interact or speed or ranged interaction with them. Mm -hmm. And I use, uh, I, I'm a big COS player, right? So I, yes. I use the, the horse marshal a lot just to fling him with the flag, push him up with a quester, get him in there, just being able to hit twice. So I'm not really too sweating with the horns, but you have to keep that in mind. That's like my play style. Yeah. You need to prepare how to handle that, how to engage that. If you're just walking some dudes up thinking you're going to try to get there, you're going to have a bad time. But because horns horns is big, we see the adjustment to probably uh, wild boulder core and Haunchy, like I was saying, yeah. we have to also anticipate that COS, if if a good pilot with a proper list is going to play it, they can absolutely answer those two sure. warbands by being able to rack and kind of just stay there with more wounds and have more interaction. Those will definitely see a, a rise up, and their natural predators for COS was Soul Blight, believe it or not. It's a horrible matchup for them, and Soul yeah. Blight getting hit across the board should kind of soften that a little bit, yeah. especially because Velmorn boys can't be res that full anymore. It's true. Like there's a little bit of more leeway, so it, it 
weakens the matchup for sure. But they have, you know, like six compendiums worth of models. So they'll just find something new and just make it worse. It's awful. I'm not a fan of it, but it's one of our team players. Kyle's just great white note. He's just a phenomenal soul play player. And he's already, he's like, it doesn't affect his list for tournaments at all. He's like, whatever. He's like, yeah, I just if don't you're, if you're not bringing anymore. skeletons or graveguard zombies, it doesn't right, and that's really fine. You got like you got like six underworld warbands to choose from. Yeah, so it doesn't make a difference then. But they are okay. slightly more expensive those underworld warbands anyway. Yeah. So they are just by their definition slightly more. I don't. I want. I don't want to use the word fair, but I'm going to use it. <laughs> they are slightly oh, they are more fair. Anything, anything but fair. Now you still have the cheapest model with a 45 regulus from Exiled Dead. But I don't want to get Soul Blight talk because it's just going to make me sad. Uh, <laughs> The big, the biggest thing though, too, if we're going into these seven, eight man, nine man lists that are going to mm -hmm. be strong, Ossiarch Bone Reapers get a boost with the Oss Effector, right? 140 yeah. points, and it gives a. Everybody cried about Brugit. Uh oh, Brugit. Guess what? This thing gives a Brugit, like how the Brugit should have been balanced, in my opinion. Yeah, it's very half specific. Value the, yeah. Half value of the die in tax to something with flying, so you put it on a more gassed Harbinger. Yes. This Harbinger will then take a triple and move a free eight. It has two-inch range, move again eight, and then hit something 18 inches away from it with six dice, three, five. You mm. can still squeeze a Blessed Wielder, still squeeze a Stalker, and like three more tech for like sit comfortably at seven models that yeah. each can charge. One can resurrect, fly, touch, and just have this outright power to brawl down in the mid-range format. And I think that's cool. I think that these nerfs and, and by increasing all the little chaff open up the space for a lot of war bands to explore something different or that was lesser than previously to then just spam little guys and, and a couple big guys and call it a day. There's a lot more things that we can see play. And I'm really excited about that. Sure. So, so hopefully that's like where that ends up going and netting us with those things. We get to chaos. I haven't really delved too deep. I know Toast. I think Toast was probably designing the fact with the uh, oh, he's he's Corvus. right. He's right in high on that. <laughs> the, the the hubris lord, more lord of hubris. He is. He's oh. on that train. It's left the station. <laughs> lord of hubris is a really awesome design piece because you're gonna <laughs> bully little, you're gonna bully little chaff and then be like, yeah. now I'm just gonna swing back and clean you up. I think it's a super cool design space for a double, right? Yes, amazing, amazing design space. Slaves of Darkness seems like they want to be bad guy dot stormcast dot deck. And I'm okay about that. I haven't really delved too deep or figuring them out. Everybody's on mm. the Vexmore train still. Vexmore with like the thrice the thrice full discord. Still really good value for everything. Yes. But I we're seeing the 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 buff to Corvus, the buff to uh Cypher Other Lords. Cypher Lords, which is cool, man. Uh, you know, everyone's talking about the sun setting and things. We talked about that prior. I don't want to get too into that. But they're showing some love and support. So play and feast. And it looks like, I mean, to me, it makes like no logical sense to just say, hey, we're we're going to buff these and make them more playable just to remove them. Yeah. I, oh, by I, the I, way, they're I, gone. Uh, <laughs> right. I'm seeing, I'm hard pressed to see that. But even if that is the case, which we don't know it is or not, enjoy it. A lot of people like those war bands. You now have fixed terrain rules. Same thing for the Gore Hulk. You could go Hulk yeah. off the top rope. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty great. Enjoy it, guys. Like, have fun, man. Get crazy. Get wild. Put him paint. Give him a bird head. Put him in the birds with Drom. <laughs> Let's go. Have everybody jumping. There's a lot of cool things. Uh, I think I think Chaos still sees horns. Like they have that. They still have Marauders for now. We don't it know did. if uh, that new if that new Dark Oath box amounts to anything. Sure. If that comes out and it acts like Feck. And it acts like cities, then maybe we see some things get pulled. Mm -hmm. Uh, Varengard's still good. There's still a lot of things here that are really good. And just because KO goes down, we see things that are slower mid range warbands like JO are a little bit more viable mm. because all of a sudden we're not worried about just moving six and then getting blasted, right? We're able to move six comfortably and be like, okay, if you want to move three and shoot two to three dice of like one three from your pistol, go for it. That's not a problem. We can just heal that up and move, keep moving. And yeah. it's it's a lot more, we're seeing a lot more things like that. So anybody who has their Jade Obelisk, which I'm going to shout out to myself here, just did a video on that. If you want to learn how to play that, go check uh, that out. Put the link upstairs. Jade, Jade <laughs> Obelisk instructions for all you all you cool kids out there. It's a it's a good time. I think you're going to see a lot more flexibility. Cyberites too, as well. Uh, I like, I, I've always anything. liked Cyberites. Uh, they've always right. been, they've always been a warband that, they're a mid-range warband, right? 
And right. their biggest right. downfall wasn't the fact that their pieces were bad. It was that other chaff was more efficient yep. or there were big dudes yep. that could go smash them down. But suddenly yep. when you move that outwards and Cyberites are still putting the same size warbands on the battlefield with a little bit of boost, maybe from the Lord of Hubris, maybe from Vex more to give some punch, that suddenly they're, they're, they're real solid. Like they're, they're really cool. Like you can do a seven man. Right. Seven man. You, you, I've got eight man Cyberites probably. They still have the chaff, the, what's he called? The homunculus they have, so they can do it. They also have uh, the Slake Slash with them, right? They do have Slake Slash. Is very good. And then you get access to Thricefold Discord, which is what I ran uh, in my local tournament last month. And I, w I took first place with them. They felt obscenely powerful. Now I think they're going to feel even better without having to worry about as much stuff. Worrying about KO and worrying about as much Soul Blight. But they have the speed, they have the presence. And if everybody else is running a smaller list, mm -hmm. all of a sudden their eight-man, you know, the eight-man list I ran doesn't feel so much smaller when everybody else is at seven eight nine ten yeah we're still gonna see some horde stuff with rbf and other things but it's nowhere near as oppressive as no. what was happening with like a 12 man arco with three cannons and all these things so um, i'm really excited to see how war like mid-range war bands like that from chaos kind of come out yeah start swinging i am disappointed we didn't see more claws of karanak bumps those guys are still <laughs> the coolest and not not pumping them is a Miss. I think the problem with claws is that they need more than just straight points changes can can address. I think basically all of their abilities need need, need to be retooled, right? Same yeah, with would, same with would... demons of corn. People have been saying, "Oh, demons of corn are still bad. Why why didn't Games Workshop do anything for them?" And I think that when you only have limited space to write things, like you, you right. can't add everything to an FHU, right? Or to an errata. Right. You have to do it in stages because there's only a limit to the amount of time you have to test and the amount of stuff that you can put in. And when you need to go wholesale, I need to change every single ability in a warband, then you're talking about some kind of mini rework, like bigger in right. scope than what happened with Nighthold. Night, Nighthold got one change to a ability and a whole bunch of points, like six, six points breaks. And that made them really playable. But I think Demons of Corn need to go way further than that. Like two, three abilities yeah. need to change. Probably their reaction needs to change. They need points changes as well. So I think that's just like out of the scope for this particular update. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. And I, I, it's same thing. It's like, do you want them spending time? Preferably, I want it on everything, right? If we you yeah. get our cake, you need it too. We it's get everything. True. However, I think when you look at it, from afar it's like do you want them to spend time on that or do you want them to spend time putting the new models that just exactly. came out back in exactly. that we've needed for a year speaking for new models it's an early father's day present to me and i said hey for the past year talking to a couple of my friends like you give destruction a pull you're gonna see what happens oh and, the, uh, where is oh the, boy the blood pelt boy? haunter mm -mm. <laughs> there he is blood pelt hunter 280 points so you, you love frothgorn right he's he, he's your boy right so frothgorn quiv just got hit right from quiv 45 to 60 points yeah so it used to be like oh for 385 points i got frothgorn and two little functional gobblers that just kind of yep. do everything they have to do and give sure. me a free attack so this is better. This is 280. Yeah, we don't have the 4-8 range Titan strength, right? But we still have the, we have five base movement, which is one increase over most. We have two inch reach on a melee. That's, I think, 3-5, three, 3-5. Five, three, five. Is that correct? 3-5, three, 3-5, five, three, five. yeah, which is good. It's a good profile. I mean, it's not a tyrant. And then you're like, okay, you got a shot. So it's 2-6, 3-5. That's kind of cool. That's like a strong shot to just kind of remove some quick chaff. But then I get a triple that just says I get to pull you value of the dice towards me. Yeah. It does not specify ranged or melee. So if you're outside the range of my one buddy chilling next to me and I need you to get a little oh, bit sure. closer and I make you jump directly towards me to get tied engaged. Yeah. And then yeah. all of a sudden I get three attacks on you and it's a lot of dice. It's decent strength and it's good numbers. We're going to be able to make up the value. I think it's a very smart game, like smart design for ogres. Instead mm -hmm. of it being like, oh, let me give it four, eight. Nah, I'll supersize <laughs> it with five, ten. That's not really exciting or enticing. I think the fact they gave him a pull on that at 280, mm -hmm. some decent range. Oh, I also get might makes right. So if I don't yes, need the did. extra attack, I could just take a double and like attack, attack, shoot or attack, attack, you know, move, whatever it might be. And uh, of course, if you get the kill. 
it really opens up some interesting options no. there. Destruction getting hit, Prague, don't care. I'm not a part of the Church of Prague. Everybody listening to this right now that wants the Church of Prague, good. I hope it hurts. <laughs> 60 points. Please insert the meme post-edit of my face giving the peace sign in front of the grave with Prague written on there. <laughs> Later. Don't care. Right. Right. Bruget, everybody got their wish. Everybody's off. Oh, Bruget, 90 points. Yeah, I'm probably not going to play a Bruget. I'll play a Bogolai mm. for 70 points with 12, and I get a net. <laughs> so, like, sure. I don't care. Again, Destruction Soup's going to change very little in terms of what it's access to. It is going to, I think, go down to about seven fighters. Yes. I am, and I think we're talking about that speed piece, right? That ranged interaction piece as well. So he provides, the Blood Help Hunter provides ranged interaction. You're going to want stuff like Clawback to get in there, five, move five, charge five, swing, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty, pretty strong. I love the Ripper, the Ripper Wolf, or whatever it's called. Snowfang, Snowfang Riders. I think it's the leaders, like three, five, two, four. Uh, get uh, lost. Uh, yeah, three, three, five, two, four on a two inch range, 250 yeah. points. Like yeah, I said, this, this is what I was bad. saying, right? About horns, how for yeah. destruction, you can bring one of these guys. They can watch straight five, so they're going to be wounding those flamethrowers on threes. And it's a decent damage profile at 10 inch range. So they can move a tag, have a real good chance of, if not killing the thing, like knocking it down at least to half wounds. And they've got enough wounds to take at least one hit in return and right. carry on swinging. Right. It's uh, they're, they're, the, the fact they're 10 inch move, mm. and you're giving like a quick cavalry easily allyable into. IJ easily allyable into cruel boys, and it has a ranged option, which is not the best, but it's not entirely the worst. And I believe the doubles, the, the doubles, like if you made a ranged attack at least once, you can move value uh -huh. the dice as a bonus move. Yeah, can't can't catch us. Fighter can only use if they made one or more ranged attack actions as activation. The fighter makes a bonus move up to a number of inches equal to the value of the ability. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you use so, the doubles so, get free free move. Right. So if you're eight inches away, you could shoot and then use that move six. You know, we're, we're living in magical Christmas land, so it's perfect. You mm -hmm. move six, you're outside of two inch engage range. Make another attack if you want to do that to ma min max your damage. It's yep. just 10 inch move four toughness, 20 wounds to give you a reference on that. Like there's the untamed beast dude who's five, two, five, sure. Yeah. One inch range, five move four toughness, 20 wounds. That's a 1.0 bespoke leader, you know, and this is 210 and we're getting 10 inch range. We're getting action economy cheating inside yeah. of destruction alongside with the utility pull from the other guy. I'm excited to see how these two kind of affect the meta because now you have however the meta shifts and changes, destruction will have the tools for it. You may yes. not get eight, eight or nine guys. Maybe you can. You know, I haven't really. Uh, you could. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you could. You, you could. would have to you sacrifice can. something, which, is, which is the point, right? That's exactly the point right. of these updates is to make it right. so that these big warbands or these relatively large warbands that have all the tools are a little right. bit smaller. Even if it's only by one fighter, one fighter is pretty big when you talk about action economy and activations and how to outplay your opponent. It's, it's actually huge going from eight fighters to seven fighters or from nine to eight. It is. And it's yeah, dropping from nine to eight is the real kicker, especially if they play minor major, right? Because yeah. then you go from four dying to to five dying. However, yes. if I don't have to worry about four nobblers dying, I can just flat out bring, you know, 4.5 big guys sure. and just try to brawl you out, keep the other dude safe somewhere. It seems like we want to head into this quick fighting, have some engagement. There's definitely a lot of speed piece options for each yeah. for everybody now. Like it used to just be like Baron Guard being primo. Mm. Now you have you have the Scar Vet, you have the Agridon Alphas, yeah. you have the Wolf Ripper if you want to ally in some cheap yeah. speed. Yeah. You have a lot, you have a lot to pick from here. And I'm really excited. I think this meta is gonna work completely different. I'm excited to see the next Good. couple local tournaments. It's it's pretty excellent though. I mean, there's a whole lot of high decision making to be done here yes. i do yes. think the winners win big and i think the way they nerf things is even better like it, yeah. it just seems like nice touches there's some things that don't matter like kixie taka going going up 10 like who cares well i know exactly why that happened and it's because people are allying the stopless stalkers and it's to make them slightly more expensive right so the you have to pay a little up. bit more pay yeah. a little bit more you're not going to get the throw around that more honestly like it's it's to not touch Calthea, to not touch the things like that. 
Mm -hmm. is a little bit more of a question mark. But we don't have to sit there and make everything worse. Let's just make stuff better. Let's just have yeah. fun. Exactly. Why can't we just have fun with things? And I think we're going to be able to have fun now that we don't have to worry about dwarven towel gun lines being yeah, able to drill everybody. Down. So if exactly. I had to make a guess, I think you're going to see cavalry run, make a run or a comeback. Mm -hmm. You're going to see mid-range brawling make a comeback. Anybody who does as have access to cheap ranged options is also going to thrive. Arbalester... You're going to see crossbows. Uh, Nightcorn or, 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 or like, that's, I know it's your beloved and it's a lot of people's beloved. I think they're very playable now. I'm not sure what's the ceiling I, or the floor I think, on them. I think they can do it, right? I think it's a very different kind of play style than you would expect them to have to play. Right. Sure. But, they want to play around that triple now, right? Yeah, so yeah, exactly. To them. But let's put it this way. I've been doing a lot of Lispering with them and I've never not had an eight-man warband with at least one 100 and not 100 what am i talking about 250 to 280 point big character and two 175 to 180 point support pieces so right when you're thinking about building that kind of way a super big character and a couple of really good solid support pieces and getting eight guys in there who are by the way movement six toughness four and fly it's right. They, they, they can't be bad. I think it's going to require a lot of testing and a lot of sure. intelligent of building course. for that. But I'm excited to see how everything kind of unfolds itself into what this is. Mm. But uh, definitely, hopefully, we get pushed into like a brawler heavy. There's definitely going to still be people playing, you know, like 9, 10. I just think it's not going to be as outrageous as it once was. So I reckon with the Hunter's Changes, okay, yeah. I think if hunters ch the Hunter's Changes done anything, it's given a really good core of a warband if you want to run a really really big warband but focused around your allies and have the allies do all the work i think hunters are going to be the way to go Madness. for that they can also comfortably ally and stuff like scarvet and other things exactly they, they've got so many points now to play with like 60 points yeah you want you want to just dance around the battlefield you've got movement six you've got the climbing ability that can go everywhere if you want to go blowpipes fine it doesn't matter you can go like okay scarvet slam and like six seven eight skinks you're not forced to go claw anymore exactly, right exactly you don't have to spam a million claws although they're a sweet model and like they're really good nothing is fun when you're pigeonholed into only playing but yeah i think what the, the really good thing they've done especially in this case and i want to see it across more warmans is they gave me reasons to bring the other skink builds even if that reason is it's cheaper so you can make the points fit because like 75 points the points, like, when, when you actually try and list build with Hunters of Huan Chi with just Huan Chi's Claws and the leader, the numbers add up in all sorts of really, really weird ways. It's why it took me so long to figure out a really good build. But once you've got 60-point guys and 70-point guys and 75-point guys, suddenly all those numbers just smooth out a lot, and it allows you the space to bring those extra allies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely agree with that. I think there is a, a phenomenal choice, and it, it was really smart. So at first, when I saw the, the the smart step backwards or the slippery whatever yep. slippery slimy tail boys, yeah. I was like, oh man, they're dead in water now. Like we 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 said, you can't disengage from two three inches out. So anybody with two inch range, two inch range, like as I mentioned before, is going to have a good time. It just gives them counterplay, and yes. then they increase and buff their points. So I think it's really smart. And yeah, I, I want to see uh, more like this, right? Give me reasons to use the other fighters in my warband, even right. if it's just that the points kind of add up in a kind of nice way. That you can do things with. right same thing with ko right like yeah now if it pees on melee unless you're on a point like now let me play my balloons let me play my pikes uh, let me play things that are not just... yeah right i think there's a lot more a lot more interesting things to be sure. done now sure, sure. and hopefully this is the design space uh we're just firing on all cylinders and i, I hope to keep seeing this type of work from them so let, let's wrap up, I think. So in 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 as short a way as possible, give me your 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 thoughts on the on on the update. You happy? You what do you think? Very quick, quick, quick fire. It's easy to want and to ask for more, but yes. I think we've already we received already a king's ransom amount of things. I'm completely happy with where it is and very refreshed and excited to see where it's going to take place and develop over the next year. Yep. Great. Good stuff. Good stuff. And yeah, so from my side, I think even more so than this document, I think the most important thing that Games Workshop did from a community standpoint was have this alongside of a developer's commentary video that said, this is what we want to do. 
this is how we understand Warcry is being played. This is what we're doing, and this is why we're doing it. Because this 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 document itself could have been half the size, but that video going alongside it, saying this is why we're doing it, this is what we're doing, I think tells way more for the future of the game and for the health of the game than any kind of points I play can have. Well, yeah, it's it's insane. Seeing that, seeing him actually use terms and understand the actual gameplay that's happening and just yep. saying, hey, this is where we're at. This is what we're doing. Major win for the community. It's just, I could I could not be happier with knowing that like, hey, this is, we're moving into a good direction. We're going to see more support immediately when things come out in AOS. I think we're in good shape. Yep. Good stuff. So yeah, it's exciting. Exciting times for all of us, I think. So yeah, thank you very much, Rob, for coming on again, having a little chat about what you think about this. Anything you want to plug yourself? Yeah, man. As always, love being on here. Thank you. You have a really great community that follows, listens to you. If you guys want to get a little bit more of an in-depth view on deployments, you want to see how we prep for tournaments, you want to just hear a bunch of dudes goof around, hmm. and you want to get some basics, please head on over to Three Heroes, One Shaft. Yep. Myself and a couple other teammates, Kyle, Mike, Peter, we're dedicated to try and help people play their best war cry, whether it's casual or competitive. Good stuff. So yeah, thank you everybody. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I've been Itan, and this has been Off Myth Musings, and both me and Rob hopefully will see you next time. Take care.